In this video, I'll be talking about the DaVinci Resolve Editor Keyboard by Blackmagic Design. And having used this keyboard for a few weeks now, I'll be giving you a full overview of my honest impressions of this video editing keyboard. If you're interested to know whether this keyboard has helped me speed up my video editing and whether you should invest in one, then stay tuned. Also, I'll be comparing it to the speed editor and a traditional keyboard and mouse to see which is the ultimate video editing option. I've put timestamps in the video and description, so as it's a little longer video than normal, do use those or feel free to ramp me up to double speed. Oh, behave. Right, let's take a look at the DaVinci Resolve Editor Keyboard. Firstly, setting up the editing keyboard is very easy indeed. There are just three ports on the back of the keyboard, two USB-A ports that allow you to connect peripheral devices such as mice, speakers, webcams, etc., and then a USB-C port for power and connection to your computer. You can use the DaVinci Control Panel Setup app that installs as part of the DaVinci 18 download to check for updates and reset factory settings. Other than that, the keyboard starts working almost automatically. I'm on a Mac, so the keyboard assistant popped up as soon as I plugged in the editor keyboard, asking me to follow the on-screen instructions to complete the setup. This was relatively straightforward, although I did have to select the American option rather than the British option to get the keyboard set up correctly. At this point, I do just want to mention that I really, really wish the editor keyboard had Bluetooth as an option for connectivity. I'm not a massive fan of cables, and the one that ships with the editor keyboard is not actually that long, so for my setup, I had to swap this cable out for an alternative cable, and it's another cable, it's another port taken up, and it looks a little bit messy on the desk compared to a wireless option. That said, the connection is rock solid, as you'd expect with it being cabled, so this is a big plus. And this keyboard won't be moving around all that often, so it's probably not the biggest issue. This brings me nicely to the build quality of the editor keyboard. Overall, you can see this is a really premium design and finish. Instantly, when you pull the editor keyboard out of the box, it's pretty obvious it's a very sturdy piece of kit. I mean, this thing is heavy for a keyboard. This is thanks to the machine metal construction, which is really welcome as it is rugged and it's gonna withstand hours of punishment by busy editors working all hours of the day to meet their deadlines. It's also fairly substantial. It definitely makes a statement sitting on your desk. Those editors who have smaller workstations or limited desk space may not like this, but I found it to be quite reassuring and not something that bothered me too much as I've got a fairly large desk. Instead of a more modern flat key profile, the editor keyboard has a tiered profile for more tangible navigation of the keys. All of the key switches use the same switches as eSport keyboards and that means that each key is certified for over a million operations and they definitely feel high quality and are enjoyable to use. Pressing them down, in fact, is almost as satisfying as smashing the like button. So if you don't have an editor keyboard in front of you, go ahead, hit the like button for this video and you'll get a similar experience. There's another important point about the keys that I'll mention later in this video, so make sure to keep watching. The editor keyboard is very much designed with professional video editors in mind. It carries a design that allows you to sync the keyboard into a tabletop such as a professional editing console. The flat ridge has a nice aesthetic, but also means that the editor keyboard will sit perfectly on your work surface when it is sunk into the desk. Now, if you're not planning on syncing the keyboard into a console, then it still looks good on the desktop thanks to its futuristic design and visual match to modern computers and displays. Blackmagic Design have also incorporated support feet into the back of the editor keyboard so that it can be tilted slightly for a more ergonomic experience whilst you're using the keyboard. I tried using the keyboard in both configurations and found that coming from the default Apple keyboard, which is quite flat, the additional option to tilt the keyboard was very pleasing indeed. Finally, I also have to mention the soft touch wrist support that runs along the bottom of the editor keyboard. It supports your wrist during use and is lovely when editing over long periods of time. I've used the keyboard almost every day now since I unboxed it and I have not experienced any symptoms of fatigue at all, even when using it for hours in a row. I'm just jumping in here for a moment to bring your attention to the giveaway that I've been teasing over the last few videos. We've got some excellent prizes lined up, such as discount codes for great new software, a DaVinci Resolve Studio license, a Wacom tablet, and my very own speed editor. I'll be announcing the date for the giveaway very, very soon, but just to be in with a chance for winning, you must make sure that you're subscribed to the channel, like this video, comment giveaway, and then be sure to head over to Instagram to like both of my profiles there. You'll also find lots of great links in the description, so please do take a look, and the very best of luck. One of the great things about the editor keyboard is that it feels very familiar despite all of the cool buttons and colors. It has a revised QWERTY keyboard layout in the main section, so it operates much like any other keyboard in that regard, and your hands naturally fall into the right position. 
outside the main keyboard, you have a few sets of keys that will feel very similar to the speed editor if you are used to that keyboard. There are navigation keys and a search dial over on the right hand side. These function much the same as they do with the speed editor with the exception of the search dial and the shuttle mode. The search dial has been upgraded in the editor keyboard. It is a machine metal with a rubber coating so it feels absolutely great to use and the search dial has an integrated electronic clutch which when used with the shuttle mode adds software controlled hard stops to the search dial. This makes it much easier to know where you are when you're moving up and down the timeline. It has multiple roller bearings that allow you to spin the search dial in jog mode to aid scrolling and overall it is super smooth and then enables you to move around your timeline without the need for your mouse. Over on the left, we have the editorial tools, the live trimming tools, and the transition keys. These all function identically to the same set of keys on the speed editor and are incredibly useful for common editing tasks such as setting and clearing in and out points, editing footage into your timelines, trimming your clips, and adding transitions. Along the top of the keyboard, you have the function keys. These are mapped directly to their DaVinci Resolve commands, but if you need the traditional function keys, F1, F2, etc., then you can access these by simply holding down the function button in the bottom left of the main keyboard. I'll get into these in more detail later in the video, but I feel that there's a missed opportunity here for a different array of common functions, and instead, there are some slightly odd inclusions. Rounding out the additional key sections, we have the media pool, sort keys, and the timecode entry buttons, or the numeric keypad. The sorting options I felt initially were a little bit of an odd inclusion, and perhaps there could have been better command options here, but I have found them to be helpful, albeit not that frequently used. The direct timecode entry buttons work really well, and as I had hoped, if you saw my last video, where I unboxed the editor keyboard, makes editing using timecodes so much easier and faster. Again, eliminating the need to reach for that mouse all that often. The editor keyboard can also be used outside of DaVinci Resolve as a day-to-day -day keyboard, and one of my aims and hopes was that it could replace my default Mac keyboard as my main keyboard for all my applications when working at my workstation. So has it? Well, jury's still out on that one. On the whole, it is fine to use as a standard keyboard. It takes up a little more room on the desk, but that's not my biggest problem. For me, it's the noise of the keyboard. It is so much louder and noisier than I was expecting. Luckily, I work in a studio by myself. However, if I were in a shared office, I think I'd probably have colleagues throwing office supplies at me yelling, stop typing. Hey, stop typing. Stop typing, stop typing. I'm fairly used to it now, but it might be a little off-putting if you intend to use it as your day-to-day -day keyboard and you've got a lot of typing to do. Another thing I notice is that I do seem to be less accurate with the editor keyboard when it comes to typing than I was on my old Mac keyboard. I regularly find that I press a button, or at least think I have, only not to see that key press on the screen. In particular, the spacebar often doesn't seem to register that I've pressed it, especially when quickly typing out full sentences. I'm not sure if this is simply a, a difference, an adjustment to the different types of key switches or the amount of travel in the keys. It could also be that the layout is slightly different to a traditional QWERTY Mac keyboard that it's just taking me a little longer to adjust to. It really is quite frustrating though, and I have to find a spare amount of extra time to correct my issues in my text as I'm going through. So that's what it's like to use in normal keyboard mode, but I guess the most important thing to know is how the editor keyboard performs in DaVinci Resolve as an editing keyboard. And I'm glad to say it performs very well indeed. As expected, the search dial is even more enjoyable to use than the one on the speed editor. You can really feel a weighted difference in it, and I particularly love the integrated clutch when using the shuttle mode, which is actually a mode I almost never used when on the speed editor, as it was just too finicky to use accurately. The fact that you have hard stops makes it very easy to know where you are, in which direction you're turning the dial. Now I know that might sound like a bit of a silly one, but when you use it for the first time, you'll know exactly what I mean. The familiar QWERTY keyboard layout is really useful and it's lovely to have the commands for certain functions printed on the color-coded button caps, albeit it can be sometimes a little distracting. The timecode entry is an especially lovely addition and makes editing the timecode very practical and efficient. To make an editing comparison, I think the editor keyboard is a speed editor that has had a QWERTY keyboard ripple inserted right through the middle. It does offer the very best of both worlds. Let me summarize the things I really love about the editor keyboard. For me, the things that make the editor keyboard really stand out are the metallic premium search dial. Oh, by the way, yes, it does have a downward click that does nothing, just like the speed editor. I'd love to know if that's supposed to be there intentionally and if it can be used for anything at some point via a firmware update. 
Additionally, I really like the timecode entry buttons and the way they work, they're very nice indeed. I'm also a big fan of the overall design as it feels like a premium keyboard that hasn't been put together cheaply and it's definitely going to last me a long time, which is what you want as a pro editor. Speaking of useful buttons, I just want to draw your attention to a very cool button on the row of function keys on the editor keyboard, and that's the insert black key. This key is truly unique as it allows you to add two seconds of black via the solid color generator to your selected video track. This is very useful when you need to place some filler for transitions or just to adjust the pacing of your edit. Being able to do this with one key saves you a lot of time. And it's also a unique and special command because there is no other way to accomplish this task using a keyboard shortcut. If you try to configure something like this in keyboard customization, it just isn't possible as the command to add a color solid to the timeline doesn't exist. I love that this type of editing command is available on the keyboard. Another thing that I love about the editor keyboard is that it ships with a license for the studio version of DaVinci Resolve. This makes it excellent value as you're getting all the benefits of studio and a high quality feature packed editing tool as well. Despite the editor keyboard doing most things very well, I do have to talk about a few of the things that I'm not a massive fan of, and I hope they can be addressed in a future version of this keyboard. Firstly, I feel as though there are far too many buttons or sets of buttons that seem to have found a way onto the editor keyboard that I wouldn't say really warrant a hard key. This is mainly in the function key section, and a few of these examples are picture in picture, freeze, trans, video only, audio only. In the cases of pick in pick, trans, video only, and audio only, these don't have any function in the edit page and are more aimed at cut page editors, so they feel a little out of place on this keyboard. However, I get that the editor keyboard is not exclusively for people editing in the edit page, and it is good to see some cut page action supported. Additionally, another set of keys that has me scratching my head a little is the media pool sort keys. For me personally, I'm not sorting my media in the media pool all that regularly that I need to have four hard-coded buttons to achieve this task. I'd prefer to see these buttons used for tasks such as clip selection, switching timeline zoom level, or adding some of the buttons that the speed editor has actually got that the editor keyboard does not. For example, split, snap, and review. Let me know in the comments below what commands and tasks you'd like to see on the editor keyboard that aren't already there. So here's the key question. How does the editor keyboard compare to the speed editor? There are some obvious differences clearly between the speed editor and the editor keyboard. The editor keyboard takes up a fair amount of additional room on your desk compared to the speed editor. So if you don't have a spacious setup, the editor keyboard may not be ideal. The editor keyboard does feel more robust though, and the overall build quality is better than the speed editor thanks to that premium all metal design. When it comes to button layout and using the two keyboards, I found myself getting frustrated by the speed editor at times as its keyboard layout is limited to a more niche workflow and task set, which means you simply can't use it all the time for editing a wide range of projects. On the other hand, the editor keyboard is essentially like using a normal keyboard, but with the great parts of the speed editor, such as the search dial, the editorial tools, and the trimming tools, all neatly attached in one complete setup. When using the speed editor, it is necessary to have the normal keyboard nearby, as there are still commands that you need to perform that simply aren't possible with the speed editor alone. The editor keyboard doesn't have that issue. So I think if you're asking the question, should I get the speed editor or the editor keyboard, the answer is gonna be determined by your goals and setup. If you're aiming to replace the full-time keyboard and are based in a regular setup with a desktop workstation doing more advanced editing on a full-time basis, get the editor keyboard. If you're editing on the move from a laptop or iPad, have a small workspace and edit essentially simple projects on a less frequent basis, then the speed editor will be a great fit. Let's quickly move on to see how the editor keyboard stands up against a normal keyboard, which in this case is my wireless keyboard that shipped with my Mac Pro. And I'm happy to report that the editor keyboard outperforms the normal keyboard in every way when it comes to performing editing tasks in DaVinci Resolve. The added buttons, the editing controls like the search dial mean the editor keyboard is much more functional, which of course you'd expect from a dedicated video editing keyboard. It is louder when typing and takes up a fair amount of space on the desk, but you can use the editor keyboard for almost all the standard non-editing applications and tasks that you'd expect a standard keyboard to be able to handle. I'd caveat that by saying, if you're doing a lot of typing, you might want to bring the standard keyboard back into play, especially if you work in a small office with others or if accuracy is important to you, as I found typing to be a little bit hit and miss, as I explained earlier. The other benefit of the other standard keyboards is that a majority of them allow for wireless connectivity via Bluetooth, whereas the editor keyboard does not. Regardless of which option you choose, standard keyboard, speed editor, or editor keyboard, you will still require the help of this little guy. No, no, not him, him. 
the editor keyboard comes the closest to removing the need to use a mouse or tablet compared to the other keyboards, but sadly, there are still tasks that you have to rely on a mouse for, such as quickly selecting a specific range of clips in the timeline, hover scrubbing clips in the media pool, or manipulating inspector controls, just to give you a few examples. Now, that's not the end of the world to have to use a mouse, but we're just wanting to try and reduce the amount of travel that your hands are making whilst you're editing to help speed you up and make you more efficient. The mouse is still a very functional tool and something I'm gonna still be using regularly alongside my editor keyboard. So who is the editor keyboard for? If you're a full-time editor doing longer form projects from a desktop workstation that wants something that has a genuinely pro build quality with ergonomics to enable you to work for long periods of time with advanced features and controls that help you edit more effectively and efficiently, then the editor keyboard is worth every penny. Now, that's not to say that if you aren't that person, you can't use the editor keyboard or still take away a lot of value as it is essentially still a normal keyboard and it's a very nice one to use, whether that's for video editing or other tasks. Although the editor keyboard came out a few years ago now, on the whole, I have found the editor keyboard to be a genuinely excellent addition to my editing experience with DaVinci Resolve. The design is pro from head to toe, and I appreciate the features that make it more ergonomically friendly. The machine metal search dial just takes one of my very favorite features of the speed editor and adds it to a full QWERTY keyboard. Alongside that, I have some very handy one-touch keys that allow me to perform regular operations very easily and limit the amount of time I spend moving the mouse around the interface. Whilst the keyboard is a little pricier than other keyboards, because it ships with the studio version of Resolve 18, you're actually getting superb value for the £570, $706 investment. The keys are very high quality, but they are a little noisy when typing. There aren't any Bluetooth connection options, and the keyboard definitely demands more desk real estate. Also, I feel that some of the buttons are nice, but not essential. So the editor keyboard is definitely not perfect, but it's a marked improvement on editing with just a standard keyboard. I really hope that the editor keyboard is improved with future versions, as I do think with some small tweaks that the editor keyboard could truly be the perfect video editing companion. That's all I have to say on the editor keyboard in this video, other than it's gonna stay firmly positioned on my desk for the foreseeable future. Let me know what you think though. Do you have or have you used the editor keyboard? What do you think about it? Maybe you have or prefer a standard keyboard or the speed editor. Whatever your thoughts are, be sure to leave me a comment down below and share your experiences. With that, I need to just say thank you so much indeed for watching the video and I hope you enjoyed this one. If you did, then please go ahead and like the video as it really helps YouTube show it to more people. And this is also a great time to subscribe to the channel and make sure that your notifications are turned on so you don't miss any new videos when they're published. I've got lots more to come in the next few months, so definitely stay tuned. That's it for now though. Thank you again for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you'd like to watch another video about DaVinci Resolve, I'm gonna pop a few suggestions onto the screen for you to choose from. So hopefully I'll see you there. But if not, until next time, bye for now.